Hey guys, welcome back. So this is part two on this Honda HS55 snowblower. This one I picked up from a flipper. He had given up on it after not being able to get this Honda GX140 to run. So part one was spent mostly trying to determine why this engine wouldn't run. It had spark, it had timing, it had fuel, it had compression, but there was no signs of life whatsoever. So I pulled off the valve cover and what I found was that the push rods were missing and the valve spring retainers were actually installed backwards. So I installed some push rods, reversed those retainers, and then this engine fired right up and ran out of control. The governor was unresponsive and after taking a peek in there with a boroscope, I could see that the governor is missing its weight. So this engine needs a new governor and a bunch of other things. So let me get you set up a little bit better. Yeah, I haven't got the parts yet, but I do want to get this sump cover off and get the old governor out and just get things all prepped. So when the parts get here, we can start putting this thing back together. Gonna lightly sand the crank right here. There's a bit of surface rust and that might make this difficult to take off. You know, I should have ordered a new oil seal, but I didn't. And this one is still good. So I wanna keep it that way. These are really loose. Usually this impact can't get these off. And I'm on the medium setting. Okay, good. This is what I was hoping to see. I knew the governor was missing its weights. What I didn't know was if the weights were inside the engine, and they're not. So someone purposely, I would say, disabled that governor. They opened up the engine, ripped those weights out, and closed everything back up. Anyway, I'm going to try to get that governor out. I actually have to disconnect the linkage to the carburetor to rotate that out of the way. And then there is a clip kind of holding everything in. So I got to get that out and everything then should slide right out. I've disconnected the carburetor, so I should be able to rotate this out of the way. Like 
like that. Interesting, that's magnetic. That might be it. That's the clip there that was holding everything in place. Anyway, now that the governor gear is out, you know, I'm not quite so sure about what I said earlier as far as what happened to the weights. You know, I can see the teeth are chewed up and the whole gear itself is actually egged out. So this has suffered some trauma at some point. You know, where those weights ended up, I'm not sure. And fair warning, I'm wearing a mask for this. The new gasket I ordered said it was the non-asbestos version, implying that this one could be the asbestos version. Anyway, you get the idea. This is cleaning off really easy. So I'm just going to finish this up on the engine as well as the sump side. The new governor showed up today as well as all the other parts. Everything's been cleaned and prepped. So let's get this thing back together. That's what the governor should look like. This retainer, it's going to be tough to get it on. I think you're supposed to remove the crankshaft to do it, but I'm going to try with it installed. I think it's on there. Yep, that's it.
Okay, good. Those connecting rod bolts, they were torqued at least to what they should be, if not more. Gonna double check the head bolt torque. I can't actually reach the two top ones, so I'll check the bottom ones, make sure they're tight. Uh, if they're not, then I'm gonna need to peel some layers and get access to the others. Yeah, that's not a good sign. These two, they were not torqued to the minimum spec. So I need to get the throttle adjustment off so I can gain access to this bolt. And the other one's kind of buried under the exhaust. Can't get a direct shot on there. So we'll see. I'm not sure what to do on that one yet other than take the exhaust off. But let's start here. pretty loose too.
I can't say I'm that surprised to find a loose head bolt, but I was surprised that all four were quite loose. You know, they weren't much more than snugged down. You know, surprisingly, the connecting rod was torqued properly. And I double checked just to make sure there was a head gasket and I can see it there. So I know this machine, it's been gone through by someone who, yeah, didn't quite do everything the way it should be done, but at least we have a head gasket. There's no signs that exhaust gases have been coming out. And I just pulled the engine over slowly just to make sure there was an excessive leak down, which could indicate an issue here or somewhere else on the top end, but it holds the compression. There's minimal leak down. So I think, I think that head gasket's okay. You know, I'd say the good news is everything did torque down properly. There is nothing stripped out. So I'm going to leave the head gasket alone for now. I think it's okay. Can always revisit that later. But now that it's torqued down, I do need to double check that valve clearance. I'm sure it went off since those head bolts were not tight. So I've already showed you how to set the valves on this. So I'm just going to pause it here, make another adjustment, and I'll turn you back on in a second. The intake actually was fine, but the exhaust, it lost most of its clearance. Okay, I think we're done in here, so I'm going to put the valve cover on and move on to the throttle control. The issue with this throttle has nothing to do with the rust. It actually moves quite freely and mechanically there's nothing wrong with it, but I can't tighten this down anymore. I mean, there is a nut here that you're supposed to be able to increase the tension so that this linkage is harder to move, but the nut it's driven all the way down and I can't drive it down anymore because the threads run out at some point and then it just turns into a post. So you can't make any further adjustment on this. And with it like this, you can't go to full throttle because this spring is pulling against this lever. And right now it's in the idle position. So when you go to throttle up and then you let go, it's going to bounce right back to idle. So before ordering the parts, I did take a look at the parts diagram and removed this nut and just everything on this post and found that there was a spring washer that was missing. So if I remove this nut, this top little plate, drop that spring washer on, I think things will work the way they're supposed to. It's already loose. I don't know if I said this out loud already, but I have a feeling this was converted into a go-kart engine at one point. The fact that the governor weights were missing, that the spring washer was missing, you know, that 
that's really the setup that you'd want for a go-kart because without any tension on this, you could just put a throttle return spring on there and attach a cable to a go-kart and this thing would run just fine. I think that also acts as a spacer, so I can actually tighten it up all the way, and I cannot move the lever now. So that is working as expected, I think. Yeah, I forgot to mention, I did order new push rods for this engine when I discovered it was missing its push rods, but I ended up stealing a set of push rods from a Predator 212, which fit in here just fine. So I'm gonna leave good enough alone I'll save these new push rods for that other engine. Anyway, not much left other than the carb. Last time I had the engine running, I was able to turn the choke off fully and it was running the engine pretty well. So I don't think there's any major issues here, but it was flooding over quite a bit. So there is some junk in there. You know, the needle and seed aren't, aren't working too well. So I'm gonna clean that in a second. Uh, but first, I'm gonna put some oil in this engine. Nope. You know, I don't think it's going to be too bad in here, given that the engine was running fairly well. Yeah, it looks pretty good, actually. So I don't think this one needs to go through the ultrasonic. Really the only issue is that that needle and seat weren't working very well, which it was working well when I first got this engine. So I'm guessing it's just a little bit of debris that needs to be cleaned out. And that should be it. Yeah, in fact, I see some right there. That's probably all it was. There's no need to put this one through the ultrasonic. That little bit of debris that I picked off the needle, I think that was the only issue. So I'm gonna spray the bowl, just get the last bits out, and I think we'll be good. I'm just gonna use a bit of WD-40 on the needle. You do not wanna use carb cleaner, as you will destroy that tip.
I'm gonna hold off actually installing this carburetor because there's an issue under this blower housing. When the engine's running, I hear a lot of scraping and it's pretty loud. So something definitely isn't right and the carburetor has to be off in order to get this uninstalled. Anyway, from looking at it, there are three clues as to what's going on here. You know, first I noticed there are washers going around the starter recoil, which brings this a little bit further away from the cup. So the guy before me definitely knew there was an issue and he was trying to compensate for that with those washers. The second thing I noticed is that the paint colors between the blower housing and the starter, they're different. You know, the starter looks older, the blower housing looks newer. And that brings me to the last clue. This backing plate has this metal tab that kind of sticks out. And it's actually preventing the blower housing from going all the way in. And someone had to bend the backing plate out of the way to kind of get this to go on. But it's letting air out. You know, things aren't quite aligned right. And maybe that is the whole problem. So I wasn't sure what this was. I haven't seen this before, but it didn't make sense that it was there. So I Google searched images for a GX 140 and finally found one that shed some light on this. You know, that one showed pretty much the same setup, except the blower housing had kind of gone around this metal backing plate. And from what I can tell, that was an accommodation for like an optional electric start, which this engine doesn't have, but the original blower housing had that, that bump out. So someone replaced it with the wrong part and they didn't really bother to make things work. So I need to get this off. I'm going to try to break or cut this off, bend things back into shape, and hopefully that works out. Otherwise, you know, I can get a different backing plate that fits a little better. I think I know what the first problem was. The bolts that hold the starter recoil on, I think they're too long. They go in at least a quarter of an inch. And from what I can tell, the fins on the fan, they all have little notches knocked out, most likely where those bolts were. So someone put bolts in that were too long. You know, thankfully, none of the fins are missing. But yeah, it's a little bit less effective, I'd say in cooling. So those bolts need to be swapped out for sure. Uh, potentially the fan, but you know, honestly, I'm not too worried about it because this is a winter machine. It runs in very cold weather, and I don't think that's going to have a huge impact on the cooling. The bolt on the right is the one I just pulled out, and I found three slightly smaller ones. So I'm gonna leave the spacer in place. Let's just test fit this shorter one and see if it's an improvement. Yeah, that's a lot better. It's maybe two threads poking out as opposed to that. much better.
much better. It's a perfect fit. Now it doesn't work. So the alignment, it's no longer good against the cup. So maybe, maybe I do need to get rid of those spacers. There's a better look at the alignment now that that tab is gone. Things are pretty much dead on. Spacers have been eliminated and the starter now engages. It's always a good idea to double check the calibration of the governor, especially after replacing this. So to do this, you wanna make sure the governor arm is in full open throttle position. And in this case, if you just find the spring, the spring is what pulls it to full open throttle. So if I increase the spring tension, you can see the governor arm moved to the left and it doesn't go any further to the left. So that is full open throttle. And in that position, the governor shaft that enters the engine is right up against that governor so that there's no space. And then you wanna grab your carburetor and make sure that the throttle plate's also full open throttle. And slide the carburetor onto the studs, keeping the throttle full open. And what you're looking for is to see that the governor rod, where it drops down into the carburetor, that it lines up almost exactly with where the rod goes into the carb. Because if it's off by too much, like more than a 16th of an inch, the governor, it's gonna have trouble controlling the engine speed. So let's double check this one and see if the calibration's good. Actually, I'm gonna drop a piece of a zip tie in here so you can see what we're aiming for because you can't really see with this plate in the way. If we can see it, the zip tie, it's right there. That's where the governor rod needs to be. And you can see we're right there. So the calibration I think is fine. We don't need to reset the governor. I have this other carburetor. It's also from a GX140 and has 
a choke lever that I need. Yeah, this is the bolt that came on the crankshaft, which seemed a bit short. So I ordered the correct part and you can see, yeah, that was definitely the wrong part and also replaced the missing washer. Yeah, the, uh, the belt tensioners, they are way out. This one's too tight, and that one's way too loose. And that's, that's my fault. In part one, I didn't realize these pulleys were installed backwards, so I adjusted the tensioner cables right here. And now that the pulleys are in the right spot, 
I need to kind of set things back to where they were. Yeah, I think that'll do it. Right now I'm only pressing the lever halfway down to take out all the slack in that belt. Before I had to depress the lever all the way to get to that point, but now I can kind of push it down and stretch out that spring down there, which tensions the belt even more. So neither belt at this point is slipping and the drive belt made a similar adjustment. So halfway on the lever kind of engages the belt and driving it further down tensions that spring right there. So I think those are good. You know, I wish this belt was a little tighter when it's disengaged, but this belt guide seems to be holding it on. So I don't think it's going to throw the belt, but if it does, we might have to replace that. Anyway, I think it's about time to get this engine started. And once it is, I know I'm going to have to make some adjustments down here. Last time I had it running, I set the idle a little bit high, so I'm going to back that off, probably closer to 2800 RPM. And the governor spring tension, it's pretty weak. That's actually full throttle, and I don't think that's going to get the engine up to 3600 RPM. So I am most likely going to have to adjust that, back it out, so that I can move this lever further to the left to get some more spring tension and the engine up to speed.
I had to shut it down. The carbon monoxide detector was showing 60 parts per million and climbing fast. So despite having the garage doors partially open as well as the windows, you know, both detectors were showing the same thing. So I had to shut it down. And it's something I don't talk about much, but, you know, testing engines in a space like this, you do need to be mindful of the carbon monoxide. It doesn't take long to get to a lethal dose. And some engines produce a lot more carbon monoxide than others. And you really, there's no way to tell unless you have detectors like that. Anyway, I got the information I need. The governor's working well. You know, I set the engine speed about to where it needs to be and the drive system and the auger are doing what they should. So I'm gonna finish this thing up. I'm gonna get the belt cover on, the fuel tank back on, and before putting the air box on, I do need to pull the carburetor off again. It was flooding over like last time and you can kind of see that stain on the floor. That's from the carburetor. So that needle isn't too happy, but I'm happy. You know, things are a million times better than where we started. Yeah, I forgot. Can't get the carb off because of the handle. So either the handle has to come off or the engine in order to get that carb off. Potentially, I could uninstall the studs, but really, I don't think that's necessary. You know, to swap out that needle, you don't actually need to remove the carb. So I already pulled the float and the needle out, took a close look at it, and the needle, it looks fine, but I did find some more debris on it. So I cleaned it off, and just as a double check, I did a pressure test to make sure that needle is holding pressure. You want it to be able to hold at least a few pounds of pressure. I mean, this is gravity fed, so it's not gonna be much more than one or two PSI, but if I hold the float up and pump it up to about five PSI, it's holding just fine. So I think the needle's fine. We'll give it another try. It's been over an hour with the test tank hooked up, fuel valve turned on, and there's no leaks. So maybe it's fixed. The old fuel line, it's petrified and starting to crack, so I'm going to fish up a new fuel line from the carb to the tank. This would definitely be easier without the air box. 
installed. And last but not least, the bracket to hold the shoot adjustment in place. It's a discontinued part, and if you saw last week's video, you'd know that I spent some time making this, which, granted, not as nice as the original part, but it'll do the job. We're almost there. I just want to check the oil real quick in this gearbox and double check the ride height. That scraper in the back there, it looks really low. It should have about a quarter inch clearance. Yeah, plenty of oil, it looks nice and clean. Maybe a touch overfilled, but I'd say that's near perfect. Yeah, there's not enough clearance there, so I'm going to put a paint stick on each side just to prop it up a little bit and then try to crack these loose, drop these plates down and I think we'll be done.
Although these levers work okay, as far as engaging the drive system and the auger, the auger lever should stay locked into place as long as the drive is down. And it's not. You know, there is, I can hear a click, but whatever that locking mechanism is does not seem to be engaging. So it looks like this cover is removable and that's where I hear the clicking noise coming from. So I'm gonna pop that off, have a look and see if there's any adjustments that can be made. Yeah, that's the lock right there. Let's try actuating this and see where we're falling short. Seems like it should work. I'm gonna tie down the drive lever so I can get both hands on this. Might just be the spring has gotten a little bit weak. So maybe I can tighten that spring up a little. Yeah, I don't think so. Increasing the spring tension really doesn't seem to be the answer because the best I can do is about a half rotation extra and it doesn't, doesn't really go any further. The spring starts to bunch up. So I'm left with you know, a possible issue with wear but I'm not really seeing excessive wear. I mean, I can see some shiny spots, but I can't, can't feel it. So I don't think that's the issue. Uh, there is, it looks like an adjustment here, where if I loosen these nuts here, I can kind of slide the handle and orient it a little differently on this plate here. So I think that's the next move. See if that makes any difference. worse. What's preventing this from dropping down is not the spring tension. It's actually this piece right here. This is the part that prevents this from locking when the drive is down. So let me untie the rope just so you can see it move. So 
So when that's up, this cannot engage because it's preventing that part from moving. And it's not until you engage the drive wheels that it moves out of the way. But it's not quite moving far enough out of the way to let that lock drop all the way into place. So, don't see any adjustment on that. So there may not be much of a choice here other than to potentially grind that. But let me look around a bit, see if there's any adjustment before modifying this. I've been staring at this for a while and it does not seem to be any adjustment. This lever is directly connected in place to the shaft held in position with a pin. No adjustment whatsoever. So I think the best bet here is just to get this out of the way. You know, I'll take some material off with the Dremel just to drop it down a bit. And then that lock should be able to click into place. Fixed. I'm gonna flip this up into the service position and pull the pan off. I just wanna take a quick look in the transmission area, make sure there's nothing going on. Yeah, if nothing else, we're missing a few bolts, two down here, one up there. Uh, this one's loose. And yeah, we got two there that are actually tight. Take that back. We're missing four bolts. I'm not sure what this one is, but I don't think it's holding the pan on. Kind of surprised that this has a friction disc. When putting it into gear, I could feel something going into gear. So there is a kind of a sub transmission as well as the main transmission, but things look pretty clean in here. The shaft has grease on it. I don't see any rust and you know, there's some wear on here, but nothing, nothing terrible. So yeah, I think we're good here, but let me just shift it through the gear so we can see how everything works. And this here, which I thought was a bolt holding on the bottom cover, is actually a tensioner. It looks like for the disc. All right, let's, let's start with reverse. First gear, 
Good. Yeah, I think we're good. I'm just going to try to clean this plate off a little bit, but everything else in here looks pretty good. You know, I see plenty of grease here. It's not dirty, no rust. So besides the missing screws, I'd say this looks pretty good. Just a little bit of grease. You don't want too much, so it'll fly off onto this plate, and then the transmission will slip. Found a few extra bolts, no doubt from a generator that wasn't so lucky. Not gonna go crazy cleaning this thing right now. Most likely I'm gonna have this until next winter. So it'll be a summer project to clean this up and give it a fresh coat of paint. At this point, I think there's nothing left to do but get it outside and put it to work. You know, unfortunately, I picked this up really late in the season. I brought it home the last day in January, and now it's the last week in February. So winter, it's coming to an end pretty quickly. You know, I'd say I still have another four to six weeks, potentially for a storm. So I'm going to pause it here and give it a bit of time. And with any luck, when I start recording again, it'll be outside plowing some snow. It's only been 24 hours and this snow, it's not on the forecast. This is just a random snow squall and it's coming down fast. It's gonna end soon too, but it's looking promising. Yeah, that's it. Sun's coming out, so it's gonna have to wait for another day. It's a few days later and this should be a good test. It's actually several inches of sleet so it's really going to be heavy and hard for the snowblower to blow this. So let's give it a try.
Overall, this thing did a great job. For a Honda GX140, it had its work cut out for it. The sleet, it's very heavy and dense, but things ran just fine. I would say this is 100% at this point, and it did take a bit of effort to get it running properly, but not a lot of money. All in, I'd say I had about $45 in parts to get this thing back to 100%. So, I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.